Hello and welcome to Mossarium in the Making. Mossariums are a great feature point for your classroom and are very easy to make. In the following video we'll see how to make a Mossarium or Terrarium with Lynn Thomas, narrated by Andrew Roach. The materials you'll need are as follows. A container, either glass or acrylic. A great idea would be to use an old fish tank. You'll need rocks, gravel, or sand for drainage. Good quality potting mix. Personal protective equipment including gloves, dust masks, glasses, and apron. Plants appropriate for the environment you are creating, such as small plants, moss, succulents, or cacti. A backing image. Choose a theme or landscape image to go with your plants, then print the image in full color. For sizing purposes, measure the portion of glass at the back that won't be covered by the plants and other materials you intend to add. If you make the picture before filling the tank, the bottom half of your picture will be covered when you add the layers, so ensure you position the image accordingly. I always laminate my background to ensure its survival. Use sphagnum moss, a great ground cover to imitate grass. You'll need a watering can, spray bottle, and a small bucket of water, a trowel, scissors, sticky tape, and paper towels. Plywood can be used to reinforce the base, and a carpet or foam sheet for all four edges along with good quality packing tape. You also need chucks, toys, rocks, sticks, logs, figurines, etc. for decoration, and a grow light to suit the length of your container. In addition, you also need a timer to turn the light on and off during the day and night. Now on to the procedure. Step one, start by placing your clean tank or container, example would be a large base or glass globe, and place on your preferred reinforced base. Step 2. Apply the backing image using a strong, clear tape. Note that the image has been positioned so the bottom of the page is blank, as this will be covered up by the soil during the construction of your mossarium slash terrarium. Step 3. Drainage. Carefully add stones, gravel, or sand to the base of your tank to create a drainage layer. This should be approximately 2 to 5 centimeters for drainage and air circulation. Step 4. Cover the drainage layer with a porous sheet, either chucks or muslin. Also, make sure to put on your PPE before handling any soil or plant matter. Step 5. Cover the porous sheets with potting mix. Depending on what you are growing determines the thickness of potting mix. For moss, use a shallow layer of approximately 2 to 3 centimeters. For other plants, apply a thicker layer for root support. Place the potting mix higher at the back and lower at the front to give the illusion of depth. Step 6. Pat down the potting mix to conceal the porous sheet. Step 7. Generously moisten the soil layer with the water using the plastic cup. Step 8. Add plants appropriate for the environment you are creating, such as small plants, sphagnum moss, mosses, succulents, or cacti. Carefully remove your plants from their containers and position them on top of the soil to ensure proper spacing. Allow enough room between the plants for additional soil. I like to use the little punnets of potted color. I have used peace lilies as a centerpiece before with great success. Small ferns are also great. The sphagnum moss would make for a good all-around floor cover. You can also go the other way if you like with an unsealed tank and use succulents and or cacti. Step 9. Top Dress. With gloves, position moss around the terrarium and add any accessories on top of the soil and between the plants. I like to use sticks, rocks, pebbles, and the little animals you find at toy stores or in Kinder Surprise eggs. Step 10. Give them a drink. Water plants and place container in a well-lit area with indirect light. I have mine set with a two-foot grow light on top as mine are not near windows. Future watering is depending on the types of plants you have selected and the environment they're growing in. Test the soil for moisture before pulling out the watering can. Some of my terrariums are sealed with normal fish tank lid while others are airtight and sealed with clear packing tape. If students are likely to try and mess around with your terrariums, I recommend the full seal option. If they're fairly good, you can opt to secure your lid with a strip or two pieces of tape just as a reminder deterrent to keep on one fingers out. Also, the types of plants you put in will decide if you can seal it completely, as some plants will not grow in the humid conditions the airtight version creates. Step 11. Lighting. If your terrarium or mossarium is not getting enough natural light, add a grow lamp to the top of the tank. Set the light on a timer for 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And finally, step 12. Further care. Maintenance is minimal once the plants are established. As they grow, you may want to trim any branches that grow out and over the top of your container. Be sure to wear gloves when trimming and always look inside before you begin, as occasionally I have found spiders love to call my terrariums home. I work around them and leave them be, provided they are not a danger to students or teachers. Feel free to change out the plants occasionally and update your backing image. 